Welcome back to Trinity Bible Study. In our last session, we saw how Ananias, in Acts chapter 9, came to Saul, prayed for him, and obviously Saul's eyesight was regained, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and continued to fellowship with the believers there in Damascus. We are going to pick up in Acts chapter 9, verse 20. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all those hearing him continued to be amazed, and were saying, Is this not he who in Jerusalem destroyed those who called on his name, and who had come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? But Saul kept increasing in strength, and confounding the Jews, who lived at Damascus by proving that this Jesus is the Christ. And when many days had elapsed, the Jews plotted together to do away with him. But their plot became known to Saul, and they were also watching the gate day and night, so that they might put him to death. But the disciples took him by night, and led him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a large basket. Well, this is a very interesting tail end to the story of his conversion. Uh, obviously, he kept growing in his faith while he was there at Damascus and eventually stepped into the Jewish synagogues where he had a right to speak. Paul was a Pharisee. And as a Pharisee, he could walk into any synagogue and take his chosen seat as a Pharisee, and at some time during their gathering, they had to let him speak, because he had authority to speak. So Saul right away understands, this is what I'm going to do. And after he had come to a certain level of understanding about his faith in Christ through these Christian disciples at Damascus, he goes to the synagogue. He has a right to speak there, and he goes in and he sits down and they give him the chair, as we would say. And uh, he gets up to speak, and he starts proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, right there. And he's telling them, Jesus is the Son of God. This is the truth. And, of course, they're kind of going, yeah, I don't know about that. I'm not too sure about that. But weren't you the guy who came here to pull the Christians out of here and get them back to Jerusalem, put them on trial, and try to scare the Christianity out of them? And... Uh, it was really confusing. Well, he kept doing this, and it says he went to the synagogues. That's a very interesting thing um, to, uh, to, to encounter. In Damascus, there must have been more than one synagogue. And so these are gathering places where the Jews come together for social interaction and for religious instruction, and sometimes just to sit around and, uh, shall we say, and I don't mean this in a literal sense, but have a cold one together. That's what the synagogues were for. We have a tendency to think and equate them to our contemporary churches in North America, and that's not at all what they were. They were open every day, and they were a place where Jews identified with one another. And so Saul takes advantage of that and proclaims the gospel, and they get fed up with it after a while because this doesn't make sense to them. And they're not converting in droves. Some were, but probably not all. And the ones that weren't got a little cranky, shall we say, and they bound themselves together thinking we're going to catch this guy when he leaves the town and then we're just going to he gets out of town a little ways and we're going to stone him and that was the typical thing that they did they didn't use the word stoning in the text but that would have been what they would have done and they would have waited till he was outside the city walls so his blood wouldn't be shed inside the city walls and so they kept a guard on the gates to see when he left well his friends caught wind of it and so did saul and they let him escape. Now, a lot of people would say, well, Saul must have been afraid for his life. Yeah. Um, and there are ways to prevent uh, your life from being taken. And if God shows you one and gives you one, you do it. Okay? And I have no doubt because of who did it, the Christians and Saul together, that it was inspired by God, because God knew the future of Saul, who we know to be the Apostle Paul. God knew his future and the potential he was going to have to change the Gentile world and the Jewish world to the faith of Christianity. 
And so therefore, I'm sure God inspired them to do what they did. And they put him in a large basket and let him down out of the wall, uh, over a break in the wall that was unguarded by these Jews who were fed up with Saul. And of course, he made his escape. And that is how God works sometimes. God will put us in situations where our lives are threatened, and then he gives us a way of escape. He does that because he knows where we need to be. And Saul knew there was probably going to be a lot more opportunities to really proclaim the gospel just besides Damascus. However, if Damascus was the only place, you can bet that the people he led to Christ there in Damascus would have been some of the most powerful missionaries that ever hit the world scene. And some of them might have been, but we carry the story of Saul on out into the book of Acts, and that's where we'll pick up in our next session. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for this tremendous testimony of Saul's life. We thank you for the truth that we can learn from it, continue to amplify it and teach it to us each day. It is in your name and under your authority we pray.